Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Ya te abena. We're ready to start our day, so please stand. Place your right hand up on your head. If you have a hat or a hood, take it off. Place your right hand over your heart. Voices are off. Bodies are still. And we respectfully recite the Pledge of Allegiance together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday, May 1st. We're in May, only a few more weeks of school left. So welcome to May. We're going to listen to some music and I'd like for you to tell me what we're listening to and who the composer is. Okay, friends, the name of the composer, Sergei Prokofiev, that's right. And the name of the piece, what is the name of the ballet? Romeo and Juliet. And the piece that we were listening to, Dance of the Nights, that's right. And Romeo and Juliet is also the title of a play by which author? That's right, William Shakespeare. Okay, friends. Let's listen to this piece. We haven't listened to this one uh, for a while. So I'm gonna play it from the beginning because I don't know that this is one we could necessarily choose from the middle yet. I think we're, we're still new with this one. Okay, friends, who is the composer? Gustav Holst, that's right. And the name of the piece? Song Without Words. That was a tough one. If you got that one, pat yourself on the back. Hopefully you've been listening to the music. You know, it's good to listen to the music that we have all um, laid out on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and listen to it. Just let it play and do other things during your day. You might be playing a game, you may be reading a book, you may be drawing a picture, or doing housework, cleaning your room. Put on the music and just listen, and then those pieces will kind of find their way into your heart, and uh, you'll be looking forward to hearing them again. So keep keep up the good work of that. For art, I'm gonna look over my shoulder, and what do we see here? Children playing at the beach. That's right, that's what we see. And who is our artist? Mary Cassatt, that's right. Uh, American artist, uh, female artist. Um, about the time she was a contemporary of, so contemporary meaning she lived at the same time, of um, Abraham Lincoln during the time of the Civil War. This was just before the Civil War. Okay, friends, uh, for poetry, we have another selection from our friend, do you remember? Emily Dickinson, that's right, who put herself on self-quarantine for her whole life. She never came out, she never went anywhere. She stayed inside all the time, so if you remember that about her. She grew up in New England a long time ago. And we have a poem here, and it's interesting because today is May 1st. 
And so she has a poem about the Mayflower, Artibus, um, and she talks about how the this flower, the Mayflower, is you can't find it in May in in April. You can't see it. It's co she calls it covert, just like uh, the military. Sometimes they have a secret operation. It's covert operation. So this flower is covert in April, but candid in May. So candid meaning. Um, very visible. You can see it. Um, it. All of a sudden, it's there. And she talks about how this this flower is punctual, and it means it's on time. So it comes every May. And she also says that it forswears antiquity. Do you know what the word antiquity means? It sounds a little bit like antique, right? So what does antique mean? long ago right from from long ago and so she says that this flower forswears antiquity so we're going to talk about what that means in just a second but i'm going to read you the poem first and we'll talk a little bit more about it um, emily dickinson the title it's not really titled but it's called with the first obvious pink small and punctual aromatic low Covert in April, candid in May. Dear to the moss, known by the knoll. Next to the robin in every human soul. Bold little beauty, bedecked with thee, nature forswears antiquity. So she's talking about a flower that's punctual. Punctual is on time. And it's the Mayflower. And do you know the Mayflower? comes in May and often it's linked with um, when um, the separatists traveled from England or um, through Holland and back around to get here um, traveling on the Mayflower that this was one of the first flowers that they saw after a long long winter of not seeing things very pretty things can get pretty desolate up in New England. And so there's not a lot of pretty happy things, not a lot of life blooming in the winter time. And then they see this flower and the name of the ship they came on was the Mayflower. And here's this flower that shows up in May. It's the first sign of happy days ahead for them. And it says next to the robin in every human soul. So don't we look forward to seeing spring come? After a long winter, we're so happy to see things uh, turning green and flowers blooming. And it's this bold little beauty, she says, and nature forswears antiquity. And so no matter how old the world is, that every year it's kind of brand new all over again. So even though it's really, really old, somehow it's new at the same time. Isn't it interesting how poets have us think about things like that? Things that we might not consider. We might have walked right by a tree with a flower blooming on it and not think too much about it. And here, Emily Dickinson gives us a whole poem about it. So I hope you enjoyed that poem and all our poems. So let's see. Birthdays. We do have a few. So in kindergarten, we have Anaya and Ethan having birthdays um, today. And then on Sunday, Riley and Miss Wilson's class is having a birthday. So happy birthday to all of you. I hope you have a really great weekend and celebrate with your families in safe ways. Um, let's see. We need to do our Gettysburg address. We've been practicing that. And I think we should not skip a day. And let's just go ahead and, and practice that all together. Remember? Um, four score and seven years after the Declaration of Independence. We have our um, Gettysburg Address from Lincoln giving this address or speech um, at the battlefield of Gettysburg during what war? Civil War. And so we've learned this last year and we're learning it again this year for those who are new to us. And so let's start at the top and we'll say it through nice and slowly and everybody you need to do this with me. So parents, there's no opting out. Have your students do as much as they can. 
I'm sure they know the first few lines. So let's say it together. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know nor long remember what we say here, but they can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you for doing that with me. And for memorizing that and keeping those words in your hearts and minds for the for your whole life. So let's move on to the readathon. Um, I will give you a list of all those students who have been um, submitting their minutes. Um, we'll do that on Monday. I'll kind of go through the last few days and see who has been turning in their minutes. But don't forget, we have prizes. 1,500 minutes will get you a patriotic pencil and an eraser. Pencils are in. Erasers are still waiting. Um, if you've read 3,000 minutes, you can get a science kit or an art kit. So a science kit. We have some a variety of different ones. This is a needlepoint one. Uh, crochet was a huge hit at our school this past year, so maybe uh, a different yarn activity will be a big hit. So 3,000 minutes, you have a choice. We also have other art kits and other science kits that are on their way. Cinch bag. So if you read 5,000 minutes, don't forget, you get to have a cinch bag. And this is the only way you can get one of these cinch bags, is through the readathon. Can't buy it, not available in stores. Have to do your reading. And for 7,000 minutes, you can have a decal for your notebook or for your car window. And 10,000 minutes, you can earn a t-shirt, Hojo Wolves t-shirt, pretty cool. Not everybody has one of those. And uh, if you read 12,000 minutes, you get a tablet. And then we're gonna have a special prize for our top five, perhaps even our top six or so. And basically our, our, our where we can see some separation. Our top readers who, we have some students who have uh, read as many minutes as an entire class. An entire class's reading minutes is the same as a couple of students' own individual minutes. So they're really working hard. And so they deserve a special recognition. So we're going to offer them a special prize. So that's all we have for today. Um, we will have some new music and new art starting on Monday. And more poetry. And keep up the good work with your class dojo, with your Edmodo, and with your readathon minutes. Uh, make sure that you're posting those. Make sure that you're staying home and staying healthy and helping out around your house being kind and considerate to others, following our virtues, right? That's having integrity, whether we're anyone's watching us or not. We have integrity, we do the right thing. So let's say our student pledge together. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day and a great weekend.